Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Thursday the 14th of July, and we're going to be looking at this new variant called BA 2.75. So let's dive straight into that. This will be a fairly short video, hopefully. Now, it's been nicknamed a Centaurus. Now, this is a complete misnomer because Centaurus is a Greek mythological beast that is half uh, man and uh, half horse. Uh, but but this is this is not a reconfigured variant. It's a, it's an evolutionary derivative of Omicron. So so what has actually happened here is uh, we started off with the, the BA one variant. Uh, that was the original. That was the original um, Omicron. Now where, where that came from is is a bit of a mystery. It could have been someone who was infected long term. It could have been from uh, animals, a so-called reverse zoonosis. But anyway, uh, BA1 uh, mutated into uh, BA2, um, that we're pretty sure about. Then BA2 itself uh, carried on mutating and evolving. And BA2 evolved into the BA4 uh, and the BA5 lineages, which we currently have uh, a complete uh, pandemic of at the moment. These are everywhere now, particularly... Uh, BA5. So that's where they came from, from the BA2. But separately, the BA2 has also evolved into this BA2.75. So it's a separate evolutionary process from BA2. So all of these current, all of these that are current at the moment have derived from BA, uh, from BA2. So we, we're familiar with this sort of thing, actually, because we, we've looked at this diagram before, which is the various uh, evolutions of the virus. So we started off uh, in Wuhan with the original strain of the virus. Then that evolved into this lineage here, which became Alpha, and then that, the lineage further down became Delta. Uh, Omicron, we don't really know where it came from. As we said, it looks like it's from the original one, but there's a lot of lost time where we don't know what was happening with Omicron. But uh, we do know that this uh, BA2.75 is a derivative of uh, Omicron. So, um, but as we said, mis misnamed, it's not a hybrid, it's not a recombinant. Now, this emerged in India in early May and it's spreading fast and the, the um, sequencing in India is relatively poor. But it seems to be about 50% of cases in India at the moment, but it's accelerating quickly in Indian sequencing is the key point. Now, India's got fairly low levels of BA5. It didn't quite bypass BA4, BA5. But what it means is in India, the BA2.75 is probably competing mostly against BA2, and it's outcompeting that. How and to what degree it's going to outcompete BA5 is not yet uh, clear. It could be that uh, BA2.75 basically hits a brick wall when it hits, uh, it won't outcompete BA5. That That's possible. But then again, it's possible it will outcompete BA5 and become the predominant variant. And at the moment, we would be guessing if we said which was which. We simply don't know. So far, we've no evidence that it makes people sicker. So far, we've no evidence that um, it's intrinsically spreading more quickly. It seems to be another one, one of these immune escape phenomena. So people are being reinfected with, with, with the BA2.75 seems to be what's happening. Um, now, in India, it seems to be displacing the previous Omicrons. But as we say, there's probably not a lot of BA5 in India. But there again, we don't know that because of the relatively low amounts of sequencing compared to the huge uh, population in India. The percentages are very, very small. So it seems to be displacing Omicron. And now this rapid evolution, this is a bit of a conclusion I've come to here. We, we were saying that basically um, SARS coronavirus 2 is going to become another influenza, maybe with an annual injection and we'll treat it a bit like flu. It's evolving far too quickly for that. This model is not working. So however we end up living with SARS coronavirus 2, it's probably not going to be the influenza model. And there's still quite a few unknowns on that at the moment. We are in endemicity now, there's no question about that. How that's going to evolve is what we don't know, but it's not going to be the same as influenza as people have been predicting for some time now. It looks like that is wrong. This virus has taken us by surprise. It really is a very, very strange uh, virus. 
So the influenza model's not going to work. Now, so far, as well as India, it's been detected in uh, Los Angeles area in, in the United States. Probably other areas in the States we don't know about. UK for sure, Australia, Germany, Canada, Netherlands, about 10 countries altogether. There's a few others as well, but um, countries of interest where it's been detected. Now, European Centre for Disease Control uh, are calling it a variant under monitoring, and that, desig that was designated just a week ago, 7th of uh, July. So this shows how recent uh, this is to be officially picked up. Now, we don't know this for sure yet. This is based on Twitter feeds, so <laughs> we're not really sure. But there seems to be nine uh, spike protein mutations, which is a lot to happen all of a sudden. So here we have the here we have the virus, as you know, and we have the spike proteins that actually go into the cells, actually adsorb onto the human cells that are going to infect. So um, the mutations are in this area here and the very bit that actually binds into the cells called the receptor binding domain. We know there's at least one mutation in, in the receptor binding uh, uh, domain that actually latches into the cells. So this is probably the, why the, this is probably the mechanism of the immune escape. So we believe nine spike protein mutations. Again, why would we get so many mutations all at once is surprising. Um, I guess there's just so much virus around, as we'll probably look at probably in the next video, actually. But there's so much virus around that there's ample opportunity for um, this mutation process to take place. And the driver for the mutational process is the immune escape, because the virus can only survive in people where the immune defenses of that person don't combat the virus. Therefore, by definition, the viruses that are selected for in the evolutionary process are those that have the immune escape and can reinfect. Um, so uh, amino acid change evades some neutralizing antibodies. Now, probably quite a few neutralizing antibodies, actually, but this is all we can say at the moment. And this, of course, also means that the antibody therapies that we have been giving are probably not going to work against BA 2.75. The antiviral should still hopefully work, but the antibody therapy, the, the, the monoclonal antibodies that have been effective in the past, probably won't work against this uh, variant. Now, this is the change in the receptor binding domain. It's on the four. This is why we know it's the so position 446, amino acid 446 in the protein. Um, we know that's a receptor binding domain protein in the G amino acid has been converted to the S. That's the mutational change. So uh, it was glycine. It used to be glycine. That's been replaced with uh, serine. That's the amino acid change on the receptor binding domain. But we know we believe there's another eight mutations as well as that differentiating it from BA2. Uh, individual response will be influenced by immune history. There's no question about that. So we are very hopeful, all the virologists I've read on this so far are very hopeful that this is not going to cause more severe illness, more hospitalizations, more deaths. Um, not because the virus is necessarily intrinsically less pathogenic, but because most people have a level of immunity. So people, uh, if, if there were people that weren't exposed to this virus at all, uh, then the BA uh, 2.75 would probably make them uh, have a fair, about a 5% chance of really getting quite ill, uh, as we saw with the earlier waves. But because most people now have got some level of immunity to SARS coronavirus 2, that's going to influence it. So we're, we're fairly hopeful, pretty confident that this is not going to cause increased hospitalizations and deaths. But um, we, we, we don't know that yet, but I'd be very surprised if it did. And interestingly, um, some very early work saying uh, BA1 infection, the immunity generated by BA1 infection, may be protective. So it could be that the people being reinfected by this are those that have been infected with BA2, for example, or, or other previous variants, such as the Alpha or Delta. Um, but BA1 immunity, the original, the original form of the, um, the Omicron uh, virus, um, may may be uh, protective so these people could be protected whereas these people who are infected with this are not protected but that's the evolutionary uh, progression of that it's come from ba2 so where the next mutant's going to come from um we, we really don't know now given there's not a lot of ba1 left it's probably not going to come from ba1 and in fact there's not a lot of ba2 left now because it's been more replaced with ba4 and ba5 
Um, but that's where this one came from, indicating that it probably evolved probably about six weeks ago or so in India, which has more uh, BA2. So um, that's basically what we know about this um, at the moment. Pretty, pretty limited. So I'm going to leave that there. I think before we finish today, we'll just look at um, we'll look at uh, excess deaths. Now we have been following the excess deaths. Um, I don't know what she would call it a story. I don't know the, the the evolution of excess deaths, and they are certainly there. Now this is what we would expect over the five year period. So we can see that the majority in these countries have been uh, throughout the pandemic period of time, as you would expect, of course, during the pandemic higher than normal uh, death rates. That's kind of what we would expect. And if we look at this a bit more recently, we see that this has been maintained. Now, this is not surprising because this was during the pandemic. This is more surprising that the excess deaths seem to have been maintained. And these deaths are not correlated with um, current SARS coronavirus 2 infection. So we have this problem that um, I'm afraid all of us are slightly more likely to die at the moment, particularly the older age groups, of course, compared to the five year average. And we really don't have definitive data on why not. And governments don't seem to be acting on this, um, even though quite a lot of people are dying at the moment. We don't know why and more people are dying than we would expect. Um, so excess death mortality. This just gives a snapshot here. Now, this is from. Uh, May uh, 2021 when I say I, we would expect this because this was during uh, May, 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 no, May, May 20 no sorry this is March this is March 2022 sorry March 2022 so this is this is Omicron times and yet the death rates are still uh, fairly high compared to the five-year average and then I think the last slide I've got here is uh, cumulative uh, death rates now, of course, these have gone up dramatic, dramatically during the pandemic, but the point is they're still going up now. The death rate in the UK is about 15% higher than it should be. Um, but interesting to look at the cumulative effects of the pandemic and the current increased death rates. Uh, Russia almost certainly has come off worse during this pandemic. Uh, then the United States, then Brazil, then Mexico, and then various uh, other countries there. Um, and the, 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 these are projected on, on previous waves. Now, these are actually, as you see, these are actually numbers. So uh, given that the population of the United States is quite a lot higher than Russia, uh, we see Russia's done particularly uh, badly. And of course, countries with the lower populations not doing as, as not, not as many people dying, but the percentages are higher and, and we don't know why. Now, I have been looking quite vigorously to try and work out why this is um, the theories are some longer term effect of the, uh, the SARS coronavirus 2 infections uh, from its various uh, mutants um, the the uh, effects of the lockdown in, in socio-cultural terms um, the effects of the lockdowns and restrictions in people not seeking medical uh, care early enough and we know there's there's an increase in cancers for example that weren't picked up early enough and of course the the big unknown is the degree to which this is an effect of uh, vaccination and i would have thought we're in a bit of a public health emergency now in terms of 15 percent more people dying than we would expect and yet governments around the world don't seem to be acting on this whereas they acted remarkably vigorously in the early stages of the pandemic uh, strange uh, but true Anyway, that's where we are for now, BA 2.75. Um, let's take a guess. It, it looks like BA 2.75 will outcompete BA 4.5 and may become the dominant variant in the next few months. But having said that, that is pure speculation. We don't actually know. Uh, we'll probably not get data on this. Well, actually, we should get some data on this uh, about the 24th of July in the UK when the technical update on the variants will be released. The previous technical update on the 24th of June, uh, BA 2.75, didn't exist. It wasn't there. And the same goes for the CDC data. It hasn't officially been registered by the CDC data or the, the uh, National Health Service uh, data at all. Uh, yet uh, but that's always delayed so it will be and then we'll know more and we'll comment then until then thank you for watching